Good day! Here are the stories for the Manila Times for Tuesday, February 1, 2022, brought to you by Wilkin Depot, the country's leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer. Shop conveniently 24-7 with the Wilkin Online Store. Just go to shop.wilkin.com.ph. The House of Representatives Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability has recommended that six people, including former and current officials of Farmerly Pharmaceutical Corporation, be charged with syndicated estafa before the Department of Justice in connection with the questionable government purchase in 2020 of medical goods for its pandemic response. The committee had concluded its investigation of the anomalous procurement. Among those the committee wants to be charged were Lincoln Ong and Mohit Dargani, both of whom are Farmerly officials. Credit awareness has not fully taken root in the Philippines and most of the population still relies on informal sources of credit. In a virtual forum organized by the Manila Times on Monday, Credit Information Corporation President and Chief Executive Officer Ben Baltazar said, There is still a large dependence on informal sources of credit and this is kind of fed into this negative stigma associated with credit as synonymous with financial hardship, mismanagement, and vulnerability, which shouldn't be the case. Citing data from the 2019 Financial Inclusion Survey of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Baltazar said of the 41% of adults with loans, 54% took out loans from informal sources. Only 3% borrowed money from financial institutions. Baltazar said this was not surprising given the perception that borrowing from formal sources can be difficult. The Philippine women's football team on Monday booked a ticket to the FIFA Women's World Cup by outlasting Chinese Taipei in a cliffhanger penalty shootout in the quarterfinal round of the Women's Asian Cup in India. No Philippine football team, men or women, had made it to football's most prestigious tournament. The Filipinos, ranked 64th in the world, were on the attack early in the match, but the 39th ranked Taiwanese stood their ground. Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship Jose Maria Joy Concepcion III hailed the decision of the government's pandemic task force to scrap travel restrictions for foreign nationals entering the country for business and tourism and the easing of quarantine and testing protocols for inbound travelers, saying this is a sign that the country is ready to move on from the pandemic. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases last week ruled to suspend the red, yellow, and green list classification countries, scrap mandatory facility-based quarantine for arriving passengers, and allow the entry of travelers from non-visa-required nations for business and tourism. Commission on Elections Commissioner Rowena Guanzon dared her colleague Amy Ferrolino to resign along with her amid the controversy over the disqualification case of presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. In her Twitter posts, Guanzon, who heads the Comelec's first division, assigned to handle three disqualification petitions that have been consolidated into one case, challenged Ferrolino to join her in resigning before February 3 since the integrity of the Comelec is now in question. The Philippine National Police and the National Bureau of Investigation on Monday said they will validate claims of a plan to assassinate presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. PNP Chief General Gennardo Carlos told reporters that the camp of the former senator coordinated with the PNP in connection with the alleged plot that was posted on TikTok. Over to business, the European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines on Monday called for the immediate passage of the amendments to the Public Services Act to attract more foreign direct investments. ECCP President Lars Wittig said the passage of the amendments to the PSA will leverage the country's potential to achieve comparable levels of foreign investments in other ASEAN member states. Wittig said the European Union is by far the largest investor in the ASEAN region but only 4.6% of the European Union's 2019 $313 billion FDI stock has been invested in the Philippines. Antonio Contreras and Dian Macabenta are today's front-page columnists. Contreras discusses the recent squabble at the Comelec, while Macabenta discusses a rainbow coalition in this year's elections. Today's editorial discusses Russia's plans to invade Ukraine. Read a full version on the paper's opinion section or listen to the voice of the Times. For more recent information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and keep up with the Times. On behalf of the Manila Times, this is Arik John Siko reporting. Have a safe February.